The Atlantean symbology for the grail path of procreation was called the Red Road, or Blood Path. Their name for direct infusion of grail consciousness into the genetic stream was known as the White Road, or Path of the White Stone. The White Stone is similar in principle to the Philosopher's Stone, and in its most ancient understanding represents a gleaming or shiny pillar of manifest spirit, that is, spirit turned outwardly into the manifest world without any violation of its spirit's higher truth. The outer form of the White Road can be demonstrated in the life of the Christed Master Yeshua. His mere presence on the earth infused it directly with the divine and altered the entire course of its spiritual evolution. In like manner, individual souls currently embodied on earth may walk the white road. The blood path forms the crucible of human generation within the earth, descended from the ultimately pure Adam Kadmon, or universal man template into the world. Within this path is found all the human institutions of perpetuation, which arise from the desire to extend one's life and self into future generations. Without this blood consciousness path, humanity would not persist in its survival as a species, nor would it grant the soul the opportunity to evolve through incarnational process. The blood path can manifest in the actions of a Hitler antichristic being or through the body and blood of a Christed Yeshua. Yet when communion is taken through the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist and the body and blood are transmitted etherically through the host and the wine, the blood path is then transformed into the path of the white stone. For the act of this most sacred consummation is a path into grace, and grace is the mantle of the path of the white stone. This is only one example of red to white transmutation, as it is to be found in all religions and in many acts of daily life. Its power is not through a rite or ritual, but through the heart. Through Yeshua's blood path, he opens to us the Christic white stone or shining pillar of eternal presence that is above and beyond all earthly blood bonds and consciousness. The red road is by its nature opaque, for it impresses its shade and form into all that which it empowers. It is the worldly way, that of due process and linear evolution. It forms a crucible for all that has been and all that is to come in the realm of the human experience. It is both the womb and the tomb, the cycles of life from revivification to dissolution, time and time again. It is the law of the red road that whatsoever you create within its crucible, so that creation must return to the same cup from whence it arose. It is the white road that carries you beyond the blood cup and into the realm of the superlate, where divine presence sustains the form into eternity. Yet the white and red roads do and must interact upon the earth at this time. It is necessary for an individual stepping into the higher paths of evolution to recognize the directional flow of current between the two. When the directional flow of current is from red to white, matter is being drawn upon to feed spirit. In this manner, the red road colors all work of the spirit with its shade, and therefore spirit assumes the nature of the blood realm. When the directional flow of current is from white to red, the divine presence is being inserted directly into the blood path and therefore holds no allegiance to the red road, for it was not birthed in the crucible of the blood cup, 
and yet it influences its evolutionary expansion. Only in this way can spirit work unrestrained from the strong magnetic ties of the blood path. It is for this reason that certain groups of individuals who have been given hierarchical sanction to establish earthen stations of light are being guided by the hierarchy to free these focuses from being sustained directly by the Red Road, which incorporates all worldly profit-oriented exchanges. If the light focus is dependent on the exchange of its services for its survival, its directional current is from red to white, and is therefore trapped within the cyclic function of the blood path, and thereby owes allegiance to that path. This is not to say that monetary exchange for services and products, etc., cannot be part of that station's light reality, but only as a result of true service and not as a necessary means of survival. Certainly all monetary type support comes ultimately from the Red Road in this day and age but through the unconditional donations of other light seekers sharing in the vision of the white flame offered through these stations of light, so the white stone frequency shall be inserted into the red blood matrix of the earth. In other words, where do you choose to put your energy in the form of money? Right now the world is focusing too much on placing it in unnecessary and uh, half-light expectations. As the blood is touched by the stone, true alchemy of divine presence is brought into the blood life and from this union arises the Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, which represents the actualization of Christic consciousness and principle manifest in the earthen experience. Again, we reiterate that the path of the white stone or white road is the generation of a frequency of superlative being that permeates all with which it comes into contact and beyond that radius through the law of transduction relays energy from one field to another ad infinitum. Those souls who involve themselves in the service of maintaining the physical path of these appointed stations of light become transducers of that vibration themselves. Further, in submitting to this process of service so each individual involved will undergo his or her own deep inner experience with the white road versus red road as they must release the old path in order to be received of the new. When the Christos bore the mantle of its host, Yeshua, and walked thereby upon the earth, he was the living white stone come among you. His presence instructed your souls and built them up as towers of light into the sky. Yet the Christed master Yeshua, while embraced in his glory, tithed the blood path giving of his body and blood into the earth through the way of suffering so that earth's humanity might be able to free itself from the crimson sash, the blood path symbolized in Atlantean temples by the wearing of a crimson sash. As he laid himself down into the blood crucible, so he took up eons of karmic suffering upon himself and through the pure presence of the divine within him, he washed the world clean and bade it to be restored through his being. Even in that moment that this was accomplished, the world plunged its heart once again into the ruby cup, returning to the blood principle. Yet out of this act of pure devotion to the world, there was a single bright and shining seed remaining unscathed 
by the renewed vow of humanity to perpetuate the red road. This one single seed survives in the holy matrix of the heart cup within the white stone. It is tenderly guarded by the angels of Christ and transplanted again and again into the hearts of the new hierophants to whom the scriptures of light are revealed. And who are these new hierophants but all souls who come to desire the path of the white road so completely as to put nothing before them that is not a way to this path. To hold divine presence in the earth is not a virtue held exclusively for angels and gods. It abides at the very foundation of the human experience as God-engendered consciousness made flesh. Such an act requires only a great and loving desire to serve spirit beyond the manifestations of personal will and power, identity, or cause. Yeshua called to the apostles, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So they set down their nets and followed him, not looking behind them. The Master Yeshua was summoning these humble men to walk with him upon the white road. In that moment, so they desired nothing, sought nothing, imagined nothing but that which was before them through the vision of Christ, the white pillar, the shining stone. He did not persuade these men, nor did he magnetize or enchant them. He instead was so completely in presence that these fishermen could not dispute what was before them. The divinity within their souls was compelled by the holy presence of the Christ in Yeshua to follow its natural inclination of spirit, which was to abide solely upon the white and shining way. So each soul embodied in the earth may in kind follow the living stone which is the pillar of Christ upon the white road. They may know at moment's notice this presence in their midst, which in turn lights in the soul the very same flame. To become presence in the earth embraces the entire light program of the universal hierarchy for the souls of earth. No oath, practice, surrender, contemplation, or service beyond this is required. Through the blood path, the earth's light program can be completed, yet it will be thousands if not millions of years in the doing. By taking up the path of the white stone and thus assuming the Christic mantle, not in a religious sense, but in a spiritual sense, which may be embraced by souls upon the path of any God-based religion. So eons are erased from the karmic clock and mankind is in the moment at the throne of God. This is the whole purpose of the Christ, both universal and in the earth, to offer a path of grace, a path of absolution so complete as to eradicate even the need for a hierarchy beyond this foundation of light, the Christ. The holy matrix which is given in the name of Hebron is that which contains the sweetest nectar of the heart cup, for it feeds the multitude from but a single drop. The holy matrix of Hebron is a living temple in the etheric which calls forth divine issuance from the souls who seek to serve the heart cup at the center of the white stone. For the soul who cries, I am thy vessel, O Lord, so the holy matrix opens its flowered cup and the stone becomes the elixir of eternal life. A stone contains an impenetrable surface, hard and smooth to the touch. The alchemy of love, 
causes the surface of the stone to become transparent as a crystal to reveal the living flower within. Initiates of the flower see through the surface of the stone as the veils part for them. Each of the seven veils or manifests contain a vibrational essence that is both revealing and commanding. Once gazing upon the interior of the manifest, the soul cannot but come forth from the tomb. It becomes an act beyond conscious choice, yet the conscious mind is given enlightenment as to the movement at hand, for within the vibration of Hebron, the mind is privy to the heart's passage. Once the path of the white stone is entered to the degree of the holy matrix of Hebron, the etherealization of the blood does and indeed must take place for in order to become the presence of the white stone, so the blood of the body must diminish its resonance with the frequency of the blood path. The soil of the red road is tilled by the blood suffering of the human element in its attempts to purify the body to the state of the soul. There are those few incarnate in this age who have opened the scroll to the vision of the macrocosm and as a result can apply this vision to move beyond the purification type rendering of the blood path. This not only releases them from the way of suffering to achieve spiritual oneness with God, the complete presence of the white road, but it gives these souls a measure of immunity from the many interactive fields of human expression that supply the grist for the mill of the blood-suffering consciousness. This in turn allows them to do the great work on a level unfettered by the blood path. However, not even the Christ incarnate was intended to completely separate from the blood path, for there must be a link between the two roads in order for earth to pass through the eye of the needle, the star grail of the ascension. But evermore shall humanity come to unchain itself from the red road, so that it may truly know the white way, and yet still serve the blood path for a higher evolutionary position upon the sacred tree. How can an individual incarnated on earth at this time serve the grail? First, you must, as the Atlantean grail ancestors declared, Aluk Keva Asat, live the grail. To a greater degree of fidelity, it must become incorporated into your being and into the demonstration of all that you carry forth. In order that this may become a reality in your lives, so you must first seek to know and then embrace the truth of the red and white grail paths, the blood path and the path of the white stone. This truth residing in the white to red insertion is a vibrational presence within you. True service to the grail is a selfless one, born not of personal need or lower desire for an identity in spiritual service, but instead from the consuming in the body, heart, and mind of the passion of Christ, which is not, as some dogma has perceived it, that of suffering along the blood path. It is instead the result of the true passion found within the soul when it engages in absolute union with spirit. This is the passion the Christ at Yeshua experienced on the cross. It is not pain crystallized into ecstasy, but love moved to know the divine through its freedom from pain. While to the mind this may appear as a subtle difference, to the soul, the comparison is great. The blood path is a stairway the soul traverses through pain to know God. The great white way or path of the white stone is a complete surrender to grace 
and does not involve the path of suffering. Through the white stone, one does not simply know God, but consumes him. In this way, the soul becomes God, for the register of the divine is in all things, yet it must be awakened through taking the host of God into the interior being and offering it to the depths of the soul. Before the grail can serve others through you, so you must dedicate yourself to knowing the grail within.